was down. It was Scotty Bando, and I just dropped off the post with Dirty Glove Bastards. They just leave me alone, I can't talk on the phone. It's a war inside the streets and love, I gotta survive. Rather talk about my... All right, we got Scotty Bando jumping off the porch with us today. What's, down with it? What's going on with your game? I'm out to just getting it. For sure, it. for sure. Trying to make something happen for real. I'm already knowing, man. First things first, welcome home. You know what I'm saying? How it feel to be free? Man, it feels... Hey, that's the best feeling for real. That's like... It's over the top for real. It's a blessing. Yeah. For real. So... Especially with everything nigga been going through, all the nigga life for real, since the nigga been going to the system. I thank God I really, out to this day, for real. People try to give me 31 years, so I had to do seven, but I came out good by the grace of God, for real. That shit real. What's the first thing you did once you touched down home? Shit, when I first came home, me and little brother linked up, we got straight to the studio. And I went to Texas. I ain't even see my parole officer or nothing. I said, fuck that shit. I'm trying to chase that dream. I went straight to Texas. Then I came out to working, networking and shit. But came home straight trying to do this shit. That's real. So how would you compare, like, working in the city like Atlanta, you know, Houston and Texas and all that shit, versus back home in Baton Rouge, Louisiana? To be honest, I can't really see myself working in Baton Rouge. It's too much other shit going on, like, nigga gotta be, when a nigga in, in Baton Rouge, nigga ain't no no trying to record, a nigga ain't got time to be chilling out there. It's too much other shit going on, so it's more comfortable for me out of state. Like, then in Baton Rouge, I don't really, got too many engineers, I really just, you know what I'm saying, go to and record to, you know what I'm saying, most of them I just get beats from, but I don't, I don't do no, I don't record out there at all. Why do you feel that is? Too much other shit going on. I gotta stay out the way for real. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm going to school in Baton Rouge. I'm in the way. I ain't, got no, I ain't got no business being in no studio in Baton Rouge. You know what I'm saying? I don't work. I don't in it. I don't really got no. Like I said, I ain't got no engineers. I could really just fuck with like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't just. I don't move like that for real. So for somebody who's never been or never heard, you know what I'm saying, of what's going on out there. How would you explain the culture and the way of life of Baton Rouge? It just, oh man, it just, me growing up in Baton Rouge, it just, that bitch just, like Boo said, ain't nothing like Baton Rouge for real. That bitch raw, grimy. That bitch ain't nothing nice right now though. Like back in the day when niggas ain't had shit to worry about, then was the good times when niggas was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Niggas start getting old, the other shit start happening. And that shit is really shit a, a, a warfare for real. You know what I'm saying? You gotta stay out the way or you in the field. And motherfucking working a job or some shit. For real, that shit ain't, that bitch ain't no place to be going to visit or none of that shit. For real. Why do you feel Baton Rouge is like so grimy, you know, so slimy that everybody says, you know what I mean? Like, was that, I know you said you didn't experience much as a kid but probably the OGs around you might have been going through the same shit that y'all are probably going through. So why do you feel that the reputation always followed Baton Rouge? Shit, I, that's just the culture. I was born in that shit, I can't explain it for real. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing what I do to maneuver out that shit. Facts. That's just, I mean, was born in that shit. I was before I was here, my mom was here. Yeah. That's some shit I can't explain for real. For sure. So how would you describe your upbringing in Baton Rouge? Shit, on the typical hood shit. Always outside, badass kid, always motherfucking doing some shit. Scott was always into some shit. Basic shit. Like I said, all the fun times when nigga was little. Nigga ain't had shit to worry about in the world. But that shit ain't, that shit ain't what it is right now. Like that shit. I feel like Baton Rouge is basically going through what the fucking world is going through. That shit ain't sh got no structure. Niggas just running wild. Niggas don't, got no better shit to do. They ain't woke. So that's what the fuck niggas doing. You know what I'm saying? That shit ain't, that shit ain't, that shit bullshit for real to me. I'm from that bitch. I'm trying to get from around that bitch. But I love my city though. Ain't nothing like that motherfucker. I come home, chill, do what I do, see my people. I still get that feeling, but I ain't finna be out that bitch long. You know what I'm saying? My bitch is toe up for real.
I feel that. When would you say you got the glimpse at first hand that the city reputation is what it is? Shit, basically like elementary school. Like, cause the niggas I grew up around, they was, then was the niggas who was running shit. They was young niggas at the time, 17, 18, terrorizing shit. So I, I'm from the South, but I grew up in Ghost Town. That's why I jumped off the post at on Gene Street. You know what I'm saying? I, that's why I experienced a lot of shit. That I experienced up death, family bullshit. I experienced everything over there. You know what I'm saying? So nigga had to learn. The world, really, nigga had to grow quick. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like it's so crazy. Like I was like, you go grow up fast on Baton Rouge. Like I experienced sex at a young age. I experienced like my first day about it at a young age, elementary school. All that shit at the same time. So you know what I'm saying? That shit. It's based on my upcoming, like, basically that shit, badass kid running around, trying to find a way for real. For sure. So I know you said you jumped out, that's when you jumped out the porch, but at what moment would you say led to you jumping out the porch for real? Like, shit, I'm finna do this. Product of my environment. It just happened. Yeah. Niggas just started running around. I was running around ghost town, young age. I'm in the elementary school running around the whole hood, going to the store. I'm all on the back streets. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what the fuck. It's a cycle for real. Yeah. You just fell in it. Probably my environment for real. So what would you say was your first lesson of the streets? Like the streets ain't nothing to fuck around with. See, it's crazy. Like a nigga been knowing that like the streets ain't nothing. Like I said, I didn't experience niggas getting, I didn't, young nigga in the middle of shootouts ain't got shit to do with it. You know what I'm saying? So I've been knowing it, but that still ain't never lured me away from it. It let me, to it for real. It's like shit. I don't know for real. That's just nigga mind frame at the time for real. Nigga just everything I see, I'm just adapting to it. So that's how nigga just. I was motherfucking in the middle school breaking the houses and shit with my cousins and shit. My next door neighbor shit, College Street. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? Young for real. That's it on that for real. Like, for sure. I don't know what else to say. Like, nigga, <laughs> nigga, was, nigga was bad as hell as yeah. a kid. You know what I'm saying? So, talk about your time away and how you had to prepare yourself for that mentally. Well, really, like, my time away and my last bid, I did like five years, nine months. But I was always in and out of jail. You know what I'm saying? 16, 17, 18. Really, done that most of my golden years for real. 16, 17, 18, 19, all the way to 25, in and out of jail. I did, you know what I'm saying? But mentally that shit, you just gotta adapt for real, cause in that place, that's where you're the most vulnerable. Emotions, mentally, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you ain't never experienced that shit, you just gotta have to really just basically stay the fuck to yourself, collect your thoughts, stay out the fucking way, you know what I'm saying? Don't be in that bitch trying to be something you ain't or that's when you go have your problems and stay the fuck to yourself and do your time. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you indulge in, you just gotta set the consequences of that. Especially you know you ain't got no business doing that shit, but that shit, you just gotta adapt. If you ain't full, just stay out of the way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I done seen a lot of shit in there. Like, crazy shit. Some shit I, I really like, damn, that shit really, like, I done seen motherfucking grown ass men turn themselves off sexually for a high. A motherfucking piece this small, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, I done seen niggas do the craziest shit. Niggas standing out their homeboy lockers, you know what I'm saying? Like, real, like, that bitch rougher than the streets for real. That bitch really raw than the streets. You know what I'm saying? That bitch ain't got no guns, but they got knives in that bitch. Yeah. And if you know what I'm saying? Most niggas wanna fight, that's what they run to. You know what I'm saying? It's basically, that bitch rougher than the streets. That bitch just ain't got no guns. Same shit going on in the jail, going on in the streets. Niggas trapping, you know what I'm saying? They, see, niggas got their money, they want to fuck off with a, they bite them niggas fucking a guard, like, that shit. It was like shit, it was just, I hopped in that bitch to the back to the bases for real. I'm just ain't at home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just ain't free, but it's shit, back to the bases. On that bitch, maneuver how I maneuver. I don't fuck with too many people anyway. So I'm baby, I be on my own type of time. So, that's all nigga gotta do. Sure. And she just stand on our team, your man, to be that man in every situation. Maybe right or wrong. Real shit. 
What would you say was the most gruesome shit you've seen in the inside? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I didn't see some shit, dog. Like, I'm, like, I'm waking up, got a piss. You know what I'm saying? I'm waking up, got my shirt on. I'm down there for the piss. You got gay ass shit going on. I see my partner, like I said, my partner. He uh, stood in this shit. They jigged his ass up. I ain't do shit either, because that's what he got. Yeah. I don't condone none of that stealing that shit, especially when a nigga really giving you, like, just the plug and he's showing you love. And whatever you want in that bitch, get it. You want to smoke, you want to use the phone, nigga, you might set it. You know what I'm saying? Shit, he bet the head that fed him. And they motherfucking jigged his ass up. So, all about how you carry yourself. You carry yourself on the street, you just carry yourself the same way in jail. You ain't got no problem. That's real. So, once released, I know you said you hit the ground running, chasing your dreams. So, what would you say? How did you prepare yourself once you got released? You know what I'm saying? What was your mindset on the inside? Like, all right, I'm gonna move like this once I'm free. She was really like, I really set my ass down and put together what the fuck I was gonna do when I came home. I'm just gonna crazy with the rap shit. If I gotta motherfucking get a job or however it's gonna go, but I'm gonna do what I gotta do to pursue this rap shit. Stay out of the way, you know what I'm saying? Like, some other thing is, my, my surroundings while I'm in that bitch, you know what I'm saying? Cause I don't, I don't tolerate none of that fuck shit. Nigga get talking crazy. Like, the nigga ain't got like no common sense. I'm get the fuck away from me. Like, I be on, like, I'm really on that type of time cause I don't need shit bringing me down. I don't need shit stopping me from what I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Nigga talking crazy shit like, and I ain't on. I'm moving around. So that was really my thing, protecting my energy. Staying to myself. I got partners I fuck with. Some niggas I know from the street was in this bitch, but. Even then, I ain't play that homeboy shit. I might know of you, but I ain't finna be in your face because you from Baton Rouge or you from that city. Like, niggas, are, in jail, niggas will use that to their advantage. Try to be friendly, try to beg off a nigga. I ain't playing none of that. Like, I went on that, I stayed to myself. But whoever I fuck with, I fuck with. You know what I'm saying? I was doing business in that bitch and my business was good. You know what I'm saying? That's real, really for real. That's real. But no, back to what I was saying about protecting my energy and getting my thoughts together. Like everything I said I was gonna do in jail, I did it. Even from in that bitch. Like, all right, fuck, they came out work release. They don't wanna come get me, I'm gonna fuck, I'm gonna send this bitch. But it's my move and shit, I'm gonna keep grinding until I leave this bitch. But everything I said I was gonna do, I did it from there to the streets. That's real. Where would you say your musical inspiration comes from? My life, the people around me, the shit I wanna do for the people around me, the shit I wanna do for myself. Like, I already looked at it like, you know, a nigga in, in and out of the streets, playing with this shit, but God really woke me up and showed me, this what you, this is what I need you to do. This is what I got you here for. That nigga didn't escape all kind of shit, you know what I'm saying, just to chase his dream. That nigga really went crazy in the streets just for a rap dream, you know what I'm saying, like risking the nigga life every day. We ain't give a fuck, we wanted what we wanted, but you know what I'm saying, like, I just had to get to it. I can't play. Like, I really understand what the fuck life was in jail. You know what I'm saying? So I just took that same mentality, came home, and stuck with it. For real. That's real. So who would you say inspired you musically? Like I said, my, my people around me, my partner just RPM. You know what I'm saying? He died chasing his dream, you know what I'm saying? He had a friend to do a show with Dolph. God was trying to fuck with him. He had a show that Friday, I think he got killed that Thursday. That shit broke my heart, cause shit, we was really all left together, we ain't had shit. But we made something, you know what I'm saying, we turned nothing to something in every aspect. We was the only young niggas at our time with our own studio. You know what I'm saying, them niggas was talking that shit, but we was really living that shit. Like, around that time we was doing our shit, the city hated us, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I say I don't be motherfucking I don't do shit in Baton Rouge for real. I go down and I see my family and my business, and, you know what I'm saying? Go back home. But everything that I've been through, all my losses, the shit I want, you know what I'm saying? That shit inspired me. And really seeing that I got an opportunity that I can really do this shit, you know what I'm saying? Really understand that I'm talented. So I really just like, I use all that shit, my life experiences, the shit that hurt me, the shit that when it made me who I am today, that shit inspired me to do my music. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I make, I make my best music when I'm going through shit or like, I'm in that mood, like, 
she don't be going right from it. I, you know what I'm saying? I deal with shit different emotionally. So I don't be quick to talk about shit. I just sit back and I just be just thinking about the rap shit. Like, you know, that be my push, my drive. You know what I'm saying? And shit I missed out on. Like, I gotta come back for that. This is my time now. Like, I ain't playing. That shit, feed the fire. Like, that's my inspiration. For sure. Would you say it's hard to make it out of Baton Rouge? Yeah. She said, because. Basically, you gotta do the same shit these niggas doing. Cause they don't, they ain't really receptive to different. They just the same shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's most definitely hard to make it out of Baton Rouge. You got a motherfucking fake beef with these bitch ass niggas, do bitch ass internet shit. Really, you gotta, you got I feel like, I feel like you gotta, to me, it's belittling yourself for real. Cause basically, Monkey see Monkey do, Wanna, it's just too much, and man, too much to make it a bad You gotta do too much, and that ain't me. I, I don't know, some of the shit they be doing for attention to get on. Like, I'll be damned if I do that shit. I got more than standards by myself, and that ain't the rough for me, for real. Cause I ain't with all that fake ass internet shit. Like, I take shit personal, for real. And then that ain't, I'll be damned if I gotta do that just to make money and to rap, be a rapper. For sure. If I got risk my life for freedom just to be a fucking rapper. So I'm just staying in my lane with this shit. I don't really give a damn about, like, I understand this. Like, I don't really give a damn about having, like, my main focus ain't, uh, ooh, that rat gonna love that bitch. Nah, cause, like, just like a nigga said, once they see you popping, you're doing your shit, moving around, they gonna start riding your dick anyway. So you just gotta really do your shit and just really think about the world, fuck your city. Cause your shit ain't really gonna pay you like that when you get on anyway. All they gonna do is talk about it. Soon you ready for your fuck up. Some people gonna be happy for you, but you know what I'm saying? I, I advise nigga don't worry about trying to blow up in your city. You know what I'm saying? Just use your support system you got to reach farther. You know what I'm saying? Don't think small. Your city small, the real ain't. For sure. Man, that's some real shit. Why do you feel it is so important to stand on morals and principles? Not just to be a rapper, but just in life in general. Shit, like, like the quote say, if you don't stand for something, you're going to file for anything. Nigga, talk to you any kind of way you go take, nah, you got to have, I'm big on that, like, that shit, like, people who just do shit that's, like, unmorally, that shit disgusts me. Because, like, if you ain't got no morals, that means you ain't got no respect. If you ain't got no respect, you damn sure ain't got no people you doing business with. So basically, that's what I look at it. You got good morals and standards, you can go farther in life with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just being slimy for real, being the average nigga. So that's why I feel like it's good to have morals in life that shit will take you farther than what the fuck you think. Just like me, you know what I'm saying? I got love a lot of places in the world for real just by being me and me. You know what I'm saying? So just be you. Stand for something. You know what I'm saying? So when you got released, you ain't make no first day out. What was the first record you made? My first song. Damn. I think I did like three songs at my little brother apartment. We did like three. Um, I don't even know which one the first one was, though. But I really popped out on some. Man, it's crazy, though. Like. Nigga was so in and out with this shit, like, nigga ain't really had no, like, nigga had songs, but a nigga, nigga ain't really had shit to just drop that shit. You know what I'm saying? Nigga was just basically recording shit. So I ain't really, like, when I came home, I dropped my motherfucking first video. Shit. On my own type shit, like, probably like a year after I came home. Cause nigga, like I said, nigga ain't, Nigga came home with shit for real. You know what I'm saying? So a nigga had to start from the bottom. So shit, when that time came, shit, shit was straight. I dropped a video, uh, I think that's me and little brother, and Final Things. Yeah, that's on YouTube. You flipped that uh, Polo G song. That was, the, that was the first video. But So tell us how you ended up linking with NBA Michi, baby. That's my brother. That's my blood brother. 
That's my brother. Like, y'all grew up same house type shit? Nah, we got the same dad, but we ain't grew up in the same house, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's my brother. So, it wasn't no really nigga no shit. Nigga always been there. He was just doing their own shit for real. So, when that time came, when it was time for us to be around each other, how we brothers supposed to be shit, we did it. So, we was just doing our own shit. He was on one path, I was on another path. You know what I'm saying? Until we was able to merge. So, but that's my blood brother, though. What's one thing you don't want the world to know about me, Baby? One thing I want them to know about him, and he really a good nigga for real. Like, niggas say this and that about Slime, but Slime a real good nigga, big heart. You know what I'm saying? Funny as hell. He most definitely want the social media shit presenting to be, for real. It's like, don't judge that book by its cover, for real. For sure. That's some real shit. Yeah. So what's some words of advice he gave you once you returned home? Shit, really, like, when we did come, you know what I'm saying, he seen what I was on, and he was really just on some, like, hey, come fuck with this type shit. You know what I'm saying? He wanted me to come on the road with him. But I was just on some shit, like, I had just, I had too much going on, I really needed time to myself type shit to really do some shit myself before I, you know what I'm saying, do that type of shit. Cause I had just got out of a little situation, that shit fucked me up all around the board. So, you know what I'm saying? I was just on my own type of time. But I could have I could have been like, that's why I say about, go back to Morris though. Like the average nigga would have said, fuck whatever he had going on and went on that road just for the experience. Oh, uh, woo do woo do woo, but nah, that wasn't me. I gotta get my shit together first before I be able to motherfucking be on the road like that. No matter, you know what I'm saying? So that's really what it was. Real spill. That's respectable too. Yeah. At the same time, what is it? What you would say that you want most from your music career? Really, to accomplish everything I motherfucking risk my life for. For real. I want the plaques. I want the. I don't give a fuck about the fame. I don't want that shit. Cause at this point, I just want to achieve some shit and make my money. You know what I'm saying? I want a motherfucking top 10, top 20. I, if that bitch top 100, you know what I'm saying? I want to I wanna achieve shit. I want to, you know what I'm saying? Because shit, it don't make no other sense. Like, what the fuck you doing the fuck? You don't want to, you know what I'm saying, go all the way with it. You know what I'm saying? So, and I just want people just understand me. They did, want every song they hear from me, they, that's a piece of me. Like, I'm, I'm big on no cap rap. Like, I'm, every, that's my life for Yeah. Yeah, so everything, like, real authentic. Like, the streets been waiting for some shit, but a nigga been one for in, one for out, going through life for real. So, like, yeah, I just want motherfuckers to understand me more and really just appreciate that shit. Cause really nigga risk their life and freedom to really just, you know what I'm saying, be in a position to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I just want motherfuckers to understand me for real. You know? Why do you feel as an artist it's important to remain authentic to yourself and not only to yourself but to your audience? Cause shit, <laughs> it's like shit that be going on these days. Uh, they be talking all that shit on the songs and social media. And when it's time that same shit happen, you ain't that nigga. You was uh, saying, you, was, you know what I'm saying? You was. You that nigga a couple videos ago. Right, you was that nigga. Like, you gonna step on shit, you gonna do this, but shit, you just got caught down bad on camera folding up. You want that same nigga, you ain't had the same music. That's a, you know what I'm saying? That can fuck up niggas' careers. You know what I'm saying? They shit took, you know what I'm saying? Flexing, like, niggas be bringing shit on they stuff that unnecessary as attention, for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, pop your shit, but you know what I'm saying? Stay out the way, too. And respect. You go make yourself a target. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to motherfucking enjoy your accomplishment. But you know what I'm saying? You do too much, people gonna take it like you just, throwing it in their face and not your target. You know what I'm saying? But shit, just keep that same energy for real. So what else you working on right now? Well shit, I'm um I got my tape I'm finna drop. Call the Rose from Concrete. I'm really working on like three tapes at one. I really got all of them like all of them wrote. Got my beats. I got two already recorded for real. So right now I'm just on uh, shooting and marketing and promoting, you know what I'm saying? 
on that type of time right now. What is it that you want most from your music career? What I want the most from my music career? Uh, damn. To be honest, I just really want to, like I said, like I really want to, everything I put in, I want that shit, you know what I'm saying? They say you, you, you get what you, however that shit say. But I just want everything, all the, my blood, sweat, tears, I just want that same shit back. You know what I'm saying? I ain't doing this shit for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, I finna utilize this shit. Yeah, I can see if I ain't had shit. I'm just a garbage ass nigga. Ain't got no shit going on, lying no songs. No, I really got something. I got a story, you know what I'm saying? I'm ambitious about this shit. I really want this shit. So, like, I want to be on the radio. I want to do more interviews. I want to travel the river with this shit. And that's how much I love this shit, for real. Like, to be honest, that's, a, that's the only reason why a nigga wake up and get that bag, for real, to pursue this shit. Very still. Any last words and shout outs? Man, you already know. Free my motherfucking brother, free Mitchell. And shout out motherfucking, we got a Mitchell pair. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Deezer, shout out Kane. Shout out Pop, shout out everybody, shout out Miles. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody who motherfucking watching me, supporting me, giving me that good feedback, telling me to keep going with this shit. Uh, R.I.P. Just, you know what I'm saying? I'm loaded, so I'm just really going with it. I'm shout out my sister, you hear me? Yeah. My sister at home, you know, she couldn't make it though. Shout out all my sisters though that I fuck with. My little brothers. Shout out my family for real. Shout out to all. Real spill, man. <laughs> we appreciate you having you on the porch with us today, gang. And it's all love. Baby, leave me alone. I can talk on the phone. It's a one side, the streets and love. I gotta survive. Rather talking about myself before me risking your.